This is Season 7 of the Team Roping Journal's podcast, The Score, the show that started it all in the whole podcasting game in Team Roping and Rodeo. At 3 million downloads and counting, this is where Team Ropers talk, from our weekly short score episodes to the longer sit-down conversations that we get to have that dive deep into the personalities, producers, and horses that inspire the sport. This is where Team Ropers get their must-know information. Hey everybody, it's Chelsea Schaefer. Welcome to The Score. Today's episode is part of our Horse Market series, our very most popular series of the year, with 88 Ranch Performance Horses' Garrett Henry. Garrett is from Douglas, Wyoming. He is a fifth-generation rancher on his family's beautiful ranch that spans big country, big open country, and they raise a lot of great horses and cattle. They have three stallions right now. One of them is going to be up for sale and they're coming at sale February 2nd to the 4th. It's online at 88performancehorses.com. The sale itself is on remudasale.88performancehorses.com. You can find all of that info. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. I will make sure to put all of the sale info in the show notes so that you can check it all out and register to bid because holy cow, there are some really, really nice prospects. All of these prospects are riding around. They have been ranched on. They are bred to the hilt, and they are in lots of incentives, including the Riata buckle, uh, the pink buckle, the ruby buckle. You can find a little bit of everything in this sale. So if you are interested, go to remudasale.88performancehorses.com. If you can't remember that whole thing, you can go to 88performancehorses.com and you'll click over to the sale. You can download the app. It is pretty easy. And I know we've talked a lot about Solo Select over the years with with their bidding. It's the same kind of deal. Uh, This is a three-day sale as opposed to a one-day sale. And there's going to be a whole preview that you can watch on Facebook Live on February 2nd at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, too. So, uh Before I talk at you too much, I'm going to let you listen to our interview with Garrett Henry. Garrett and I kind of cover everything you need to know, A, about the ranch, about the horse market, about their stallions, and of course, about the lots and the sale. It's a lot of fun. This is a cool episode, a little bit different than what we've been doing with the rodeo guys and with with the kind of traditional uh, team ropers. So I hope you enjoy it. Well, Garrett, thank you so much for making the time this morning. You are uh, the owner of the 88 Ranch, which has been around since 1870. I read two different, there were two different dates, 77 or 78. Which one was it? Do you know? Uh, 1877. 1877. Okay. And that was your great, great, great grandfather's as it started? Or give me the, give me the history. Yes. So, yeah, I, w- I would be a fifth generation um, rancher and actually we were a cavalry remount ranch uh, so we actually had uh, oh, at one time several thousand head of Morgan mares and then the cavalry would supply uh, thoroughbred studs and so that's what we did uh, that's where we kind of started from as far as horses go um, was way back in the day we were supplying horses for the US military as well as um, all the way over into Europe we were shipping them from New York to Europe across the ocean. So, oh wow, I uh, created, created a lot of, yeah, and some of our neighbors, our close neighbors and whatnot, were cowboys at that time. Their grandfathers were that worked for us and broke horses for us. So, yeah, a lot of history in horses. That is fascinating. Do you have m- memorabilia from those times or, or documents of shipping horses to Europe or anything from the Indian yeah. Wars? Um, yeah, we, we do. We have, oh, yeah, like from the Indian Wars, we have. Uh, you know moccasins and and knife scabbards and all sorts of stuff my grandfather traded with them um we have you know a lot of pictures from the from the roundups and whatnot obviously we don't have that amount of horses anymore so yeah you know, there were some big roundups to when we finally started consolidating down but um yeah so we have some some super cool history on that there's no doubt about it what kind of country is it um as far as where you run your horses today so we're in central wyoming Mm -hmm. um our home place is i would consider it a kind of a high desert country Mm -hmm. um you know everything is fairly large 
Um, and so we use our horses a lot, but you know, depending on the time of year, we, we, we do use our horses for our cattle operation. Um, you know, we have about 2000 head of cattle. And so, you know, to, to accomplish what we need to accomplish, uh, it's very important to have horses and, um, beings that I, the owner also ride a lot. I want a horse that I enjoy riding. You know, a lot of, I think a lot of places raise a lot of horses, but the owners never even get on them. Well, um, you know, they're not necessarily listening to their cowboys when they say these, this one isn't very much fun to ride. And I think a lot of those owners that don't ride them are like, well, that's what I want. So we're going to raise them anyway. Well, I don't want that because obviously I ride my kids ride. I want to raise horses that are in, enjoyable. Um, and, um, so yeah, you know, the country that we run in is, is, uh, is very big, but in the summertime with our cows, we go out to, you know, about five different places in the summer that we ship to. And a lot of them are in large mountain country. It's really rough. And honestly, I, I think you would struggle to try to run cows any other way besides on a horse, Mm -hmm. um, in those areas. And so they're, they're a very important part of our operation and it just makes sense to not only um, ride horses uh, to do our cattle work, but also raise them and, you know, have a, have a horse program. Um, and so I used to, you know, I rodeoed a, at one point in time and I've always really just had a passion for horses and I have, have enjoyed them. And, um, and so it kind of just naturally started to make sense when we kind of got into the horse business more, our, our, our dad who uh, passed away uh, several years ago, he, he bought um, a stud because he, when we my brother and I were rodeo and he thought it would make sense to, instead of trying to buy horses to raise them. And so we went out and we bought a, bought a stud and we didn't really know what we were doing. The stud was um, very average, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course every neighbor around found out we were going to raise horses. So everybody gave us their freebies essentially yeah. and, <laughs> as far as broodmares go. And so pretty soon we had this, it was a Hancock stud that was just very average, like I said. And then these mares that were probably, they were mostly all unbroke. Some of them were barely halter broke. And pretty soon we started having colts out of these mares and it was like, man, this, this is not, this is not enjoyable. <laughs> Mm-hmm. These are not the same kind of horses <laughs> I'm used to trying to ride and rodeo on. And so I told my dad, I said, we got to either get better or get out. Like, there's, we're not going to be able to do this forever because we weren't making any money on these horses and they weren't that much fun to break. And I, at that point in time, I was the one starting them. And uh, so we, we bought Frenchman's Easy Doc was kind of the first big change for our horse program. Mm-hmm. And... He was the high seller at um, Billings that year. It was in 2007. Um, he sold, I think, for fifty four, fifty five thousand. 55000 And I remember I just, it was, I don't think neither my dad nor I could believe we you know, spent that kind of money on a horse at that point in time. Yeah. Um, but it really kind of started putting us in, in a direction. And at that, you know, you, you mentioned Myers and Fulton. I was like, well, okay, you know, what are, these guys are obviously, you know, they're, they're the ones that are, you know, carrying this kind of blood. What are they doing to be so successful? And I, actually, I mean, Frenchman's Easy Doc was a Frenchman's guy, you know, by Frenchman's guy. And then out of a, a mare that um, Fulton's and Myers is, were working together on Easy April Lena. And so... Yeah, I mean, when you, when you do mention those, that was a combination of the two programs. And <laughs> so, you know, I, so we started to try to, you know, so obviously we needed to, you know, improve our mare herd. And um, so that was kind of where we went with it, is starting to, to make better mares. And the, uh, it was almost instant, you know, how much better these horses were to ride, to ranch on, do all these things. And so we kind of started to see the light and realize that hey there is a you know there is a better way to do this and uh, it's really kind of taken off since then it's become you know much more enjoyable for sure yeah and then you've got so 
you went from Frenchman's Easy Doc to which I loved him and I loved his babies. Um, I had a bunch of girlfriends in a past life when I was a barrel racer <laughs> um, that had Frenchman's Easy Docs and and they, they were awesome. But then you went to roll was Roller and Shaker the next one that you bought next to um, Casino Heist was Casino Heist was um, yep and uh, so we bought Casino Heist. Um, uh, Hallie Hansen had rode several. Uh, siblings to Casino Heist, and she loved them, and I loved those horses. They're just extremely well-made, trainable horses. Um, and so we bought him pretty much the day he hit the ground. I remember, uh, yeah, he was born up in Rapid City in a stall up there at the, at, uh, at Cami Ireland's vet clinic. Don Schnorr raised him, and and we knew what he was. We knew what his siblings were, and we bought him right then and there. And, and uh He's just done a fabulous job for us. Um, he's really, you know, when we're talking about rope horses, he's done a, a really great job on the rope horse side. Um, Anna Callaway, she just won the Montana uh, circuit up there on a casino heist in the breakaway roping. Um, Chase Stout has has one that he's hauling to the pro rodeos in the calf roping. Um there's a couple others that are being hauled at the, to the pro rodeos in the, in the calf roping. Um, Summer Collada with uh, Caden Richard. I love Summer Collada. Really well. That horse is so photogenic too. So you have. She is. She's, yeah. a, she's a beautiful mare. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so yeah, I'm really excited about about him as a rope horse sire. Um, he's done he's done really well for us. And then yeah, then Roller and Shaker we. We um, actually went and, and raised him. He was, uh, I wanted something different because I felt like there was so much uh, Frenchman's guy and Dash to Fame and whatnot, which is, you know, obviously, you know, great blood, but it's like, okay, you know, how do we kind of stand out from the crowd here? And so I actually thought, you know, what would be the perfect bloodline that's still, you know, very uh, proven as far as successful rodeo wise? but hasn't been over overused and overbred and you know so we so you know bogey's biancus at that time was still alive we've been in the nfr a couple times in the barrel racing um hadn't raised a ton of colts and uh so i contacted sid and sid and randy ray Britt, and and uh, they said yeah we've never shipped on him but we would so they were willing to ship on him and i had to then i had to figure out you know where's the you know what are we going to bring him to and Marty Joak who made the NFR I believe five times and won the world in the barrel racing um was another incredible stallion that never really um had very many colts um you know it was just a different time and so we I found the last couple living daughters of Marty Joak Marty Joak and went out to to Illinois and Wisconsin and bought them I think we bred um, those mares, they were 23 years old and Bogies Biancas was 25 mm-hmm. and, uh, ship semen on him and got, got that embryo that Roller and the Shaker was and was able to, to make it happen. So, yeah, I mean, he was definitely by design. There wasn't any sort of mistake and we really enjoyed him. You know, he's going to be in our sale. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we we're going to retain quite a few fillies out of him. I really, I really do like his, his Colts. Um, you know, the big thing is, is we're, you know, we did buy Sheik gene fly HTT and we want to, um, you know, really get behind him. And so, you know, in fairness to roller and the shaker and in fairness to Sheik, we want to, you know, try to get just behind one stallion here for a little while and see if we can really push him as hard as we can. So, yeah, let's talk about that new stallion purchase. That that horse is. Where do you see him fitting into to your program and uh, to you know the the rope horse incentives and the barrel horse incentives? What what's your plans with him? Yeah, so um, you know we we have some big plans with him. I, you know, I think that uh, I got, contacted Lee and Hallie Hansen who helped me help me find him, and I basically just gave him a very tall order of you know this is the this is what we want we want to completely change our horse program 
to where there's some shock and awe there. There's a, you know, we want him, we want a pink buckle sire. Um, because, you know, I think that that really and truly gives you such a huge leg up. I wanted the horse to be breeding, you know, a lot of mares already so that he's kind of already, um, the, the, the deck is kind of stacked in his favor as far as being a prominent sire, which, you know, he's, he's bred many, many NFR mares, BFA world champions. I mean, the list goes on. He's bred some incredibly good mares already in his first two. Um, well, the, the first cold crop is here and the second one is, you know, going to be born this spring. So, and then I wanted him to also be proven as far as a, as a, um, stallion performing. And so, you know, that, that is a difficult thing to achieve. Um, but we looked at a few different horses, but, you know, and some really nice horses, but, um, they didn't check all the boxes. Fortunately, Lee called Keith Nielsen and asked him about Sheik, who Hallie had actually ridden uh, Sheik. And he was not for sale, but uh, fortunately enough, Keith decided that he would be willing to sell him. And we went and looked at him between Christmas and New Year's this, this last year and yeah. and uh, made a deal. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, I, I just feel like he's he's going to be – you know, a complete game changer for us. I think that his Colts will be given um, a lot of chances because of who he is, um, how he's bred. You know, he's a Brazilian bred horse, so he's a, again, he's a great outcross. Yeah, I was going to ask you um, to talk about that. Like, um, wh- how did he come about? I guess do you, do you know that backstory as to how? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I probably not as well as Keith does, but I do mm-hmm. know the story to a point, and and um, you know. Keith, um, somehow or another had some connections to Brazil in Brazil and, um, had heard about Sheik and, uh, you know, he was, I think he ran 16, 16 second, uh, uh, sub 16 second pattern patterns and on a standard in Brazil and was just, you know, really doing extremely well in Brazil. And, you know, Keith raises some, some incredibly nice horses. He owns, uh, KV and Corona. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he was just looking for something kind of different. He, I believe is a part owner in the pink buckle and was looking for, you know, a, a horse that, that could be very promotable, you know, breed the right kind of mares in the barrel world. And, uh, you know, something, something different because, you know, going back to, you know, we do need some sort of some outcrosses. And, um, so I think Keith saw that in him and, so he he bought him in Brazil, um, and then I think it. I want to say it took nearly two years to get him up here. Yeah. Um, so it was quite a quite a process um, to get him up here, but he got him up here. They did run him, uh, you know, and he he did did well, you know, with limited limited running up here in the United States. I think he just wanted to make sure to prove to people, hey, you know. Yeah, he did well in Brazil, but he can do well up here. Yeah, he's legit. Um, yeah, he's legit. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, and, and and then, you know, from there, um, it was standing him. And like I said, you know, the, the lineup of mares that, that, that he has bred is just really an incredible set of mares. Um, you know, many, many NFR mares, BFA world champions, the whole deal. And so, you know, there's there's really in my opinion absolutely no way that Sheik won't be a very dominant sire um in the united states and so you know that that really helped me make my decision it's like well you know this is really a plug and play kind of a scenario um and you know as a as a rope horse sire i think he's going to be phenomenal he's we're going to breed quite a few cow horse mares to him i know keith bred several cow horse mares to him looking at his um you know what he's bred over the past there's several cow type bred mares to him i think that he's really gonna be a cool sire you know of course we have him in the in the royal crown as well as the riata buckle um you know and and i think one one thing that that we decided to continue um you know for several reasons is the um 
the Sheik's own incentive, which is, you know, you, if you win money in the pink, the ruby, and the Riata buckle on the same horse in, in, the, in the same uh, year, that you actually, um, you know, there's a hundred thousand dollar jackpot for that. So that's amazing. Um, I didn't know that. That's wild. Yes. So the so and it's and it's actually the first three horses. So the first one will win fifty thousand, mm-hmm. and then the second uh, two horses that are able to achieve that will both win twenty five thousand dollars. And so, I mean, that's that's an incredible um, incentive. You know, we want to to promote him as a as a rope and a barrel sire, and I mean, and we're not talking about having to win the the um, any of those events. This is just winning money in it. So, yeah, so you can win the three D of the barrel race and win the twelve or the the nine of the Riata theoretically. Absolutely, you Very just cool. need to win a dollar in each one. That's I mean, awesome. they're, they're, so I mean, uh, uh, to me. Um, I really think that if you're looking for a horse that you want to do all of these things on, you really need to, to try to try and do that because, you know, it's first full crop, full crop, in my opinion, it, it may, you know, it's possible that somebody may do that. So I think, you know, if you do want to have a chance at some incredible money with r- really a limited amount of competition, it would be well worth, you know, getting a, a sheep colt and trying to do that on it. Okay, I'm going to take a break from this interview to give you the full details on the sale, just so you are not confused. The sale starts on February 2nd, 2024 at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. It closes February 4th, 2024 at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that means there will be a preview of all the horses that you can check. It's a virtual preview, February 2nd, 2024 at 5 p.m., So that's Friday, February 22nd, and they're going to talk about each horse. You can look at them. They're going to ride them. Uh, They'll answer any questions that you can put in the comments, too, on the sale, or you can give them a call. So you can find all of that information at remudasale.88performancehorses.com. You can look at all of the lots, including their stallion, Roller and Shaker, and you can uh, just get a feel for them, those There are x-rays on every horse, full black type pedigrees. You can see it all on remudasale.88performancehorses.com. Yeah, I love him. I love him. That's awesome. Um, Yeah. And so, yeah, you said Ruby, Riata. There's probably a whole gamut of incentives that he's in beyond that. Is he in the Colorado Classic and – he uh, is the diamond, the diamond mm-hmm. classic, Colorado classic, VGBRA. Um, yeah, and and well, it's like well, a quiz. He's in legend. List. He's legendary <laughs> stakes as well. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We've we've um, put him in quite a bit, and and you know, I mean, as time goes on, and we hear people, you know, say, "Hey, I'd like to have this or that or whatever." Um, you know, I certainly think that we'll we will continue to add that. And, you know, that's another reason um you know why we want to just specifically kind of get behind sheep for a while is you know these these um incentives are very expensive and you start spreading it out across three or four stallions it gets really crazy and so to me it's like well let's just get behind one and push everything you know i mean Mm -hmm. instead of trying to do a little bit for each one and and not really doing a, a a any one of those stallions justice Let's just try to get behind one, you know, give everybody the incentives they want and um, and give ourselves a chance to, to do well with it. So, yeah. And, and I feel I, I've heard from folks, especially regarding the Riata buckle, because I guess that's what I hear the most um, conversation mm-hmm. about. And, and of course, the Royal Crown, too, uh, that that pay if in the case of, say, the Riata buckle, that paying into that on Colts is is bringing up their value quite a bit when you when you go to resell them. Have you had that experience as far as, you know, the non riata versus or the non non incentive oh, versus the Absolutely. I mean, I, there's it's getting to the point now where people are becoming educated enough with all these incentives that they a lot of people will not buy a horse without incentives. Mm-hmm. Um and uh so yeah, I mean it it absolutely adds value to the Colts and it adds value to 
the horse for the customer down the road as well. You know, you know what what's exciting to me is is you have um, you know in the rope horse industry, it seems like there's finally enough money for people that are um, owners but not riders that can actually you know raise a horse, send it to a trainer, and have a chance at making enough money you know, to do this and buy a prospect every year and just continue to send it to a trainer. So, you know, you're really and truly, you know, creating jobs, um, for trainers and you're, you're also creating a need and a market for rope horse prospects. Yeah. And so, you know, it's really, it's really starting to, I I think that, you know, these are exciting times that, you know, are just, you know, we're just barely getting started in that. And that's exciting because, you know, that's what's, you know, you look at uh, barrels, cutting racehorses, whatever, you know, that, that dynamic has been around for a long time. But it's, it's, it is finally, I think, starting to take off in the rope horse world, which is, you know, just super cool. So. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, it seems like a lot of breeders are hedging their bets on the on programs like the Riata Buckle and the Royal Crown and these incentives really taking off. Um, but it's so far so good. And if anything, uh, I feel like team roping has proven itself the most profitable uh, market in the horse industry or, you know, in the Western performance space so far. So hopefully mm-hmm. the masses yeah. can. And, and it looks like on your website, you've got a little bit of something for everybody. You're not just targeting um, NFR headers or NFR healers on in this sale coming up. There's stuff that's going to be applicable the whole way up and down, especially with how they're bred, um, because they are going to be versatile and they're going to be good minded. It looks, it, you know, tell me, tell me about the sale and the babies that you've got offered in this sale coming up. Yeah, you know, so I, the the babies in the sale. I think the probably the place to start on that is you know versatility is really what we push for, and you know a lot of these are going to be out of kind of run and bred type mares, but you know the type of mares that I select for in the in a running bred horse i want a running bred horse that looks like a cow horse i want a fast typey smaller type horse i don't want these long stretched out horses that don't have that rodeo athleticism and so um you know these colts are going to be very well rounded um type colts a lot of these colts are gonna would make you know phenomenal uh rope horse prospects um and we have quite a few people, I think, that are interested in them as rope horse prospects. But, um, you know, there's really none of them that are those long, gangly type horses that aren't going to be able to get gathered up. You know, a lot of them have really nice stops on them. Um, you know, the cool thing about the casino heist is they're real short backed and they're always up underneath themselves, ready to ready to stop or, or make that move. Um, and so, you know, he's really, you know, a cool rope horse are because of that, because they're always ready. They're not, they're never stretched out type horses. And, you know, the, the thing I think that really helps our program out as far as the uh, prospects in general is um, the the training that they have on them. Mm -hmm. uh, When we first started kind of going down the path of, of um, to get to where we are with the sale, it kind of started out as, okay, here, you know, we're raising these nice horses, putting our heart and soul into them, and then we're selling these weanlings, and somebody takes them, and then they just sit in the the run for the rest of their life, and you ask them five years later, well, what did you do with that colt? And they're like, oh, well, you know, you know, typical story, he got hurt, and we just never got around to starting him or whatever, but, you know, long story short is most people just don't have the time and the ability to get a horse started and going to where they can just get on them and go and so um troy brandemil who trains for us uh oh i think it's been probably right, right around 10 years ago he started riding some horses for us and we got to talking about this and and so the goal was you know let's let's start trying to get these horses riding nice enough that when people come to buy them all they have to do is just go on with them like they're ready to go to the arena or whatever their their plan is and set them up for a success. And so we started doing that. And of course, at that point, it was private treaty still. So we're, you know, making these, making these horses when they have, you know, anywhere from 70 to 120 days, we started trying to market them and 
is working really good. But then the thing we were running into is, you know, first of the year you get the pick of all the Colts. By the end of the year, all we're left with is the last Colts. So, you know, you might have a really great client, sh- you know, call you up late in the year and you only have one Colt left. Well, you know, you'd have loved to have been yeah. able to give that client that chance at all of them. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of where we decided, okay, well, you know, what what about doing a sale? And um, at that point, Lisa Fordyce, who, who also you know, is a phenomenal part of our program, she does the, the media side of things. She's um, amazing. Yes. Thank you. She's amazing. We love Lisa. <laughs> And she's a she's a yes woman. She mm-hmm. she's uh, always uh, up for a challenge. And so it was, you know, let's you know let's 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 do a sale. And of course, Lisa's like, yeah, let's do it. So anyway, uh, Troy and Lisa and um, and whatnot kind of started figuring out. Okay, how are we going to do this? And we at that point in time, we were really high on how auction mobility was their platform and and how it was doing for other people and so um you know this will be our third sale so three years ago we we just kind of off of an act of faith just jumped in with both feet and tried it and and uh, you know i think it works really well i love the fact that everybody like i said gets a chance at all the horses um you know we have people coming out over the last few weeks to come look at all the horses they can come in, they can talk to us just like you're coming to the barn to hang out for the day, kind of a scenario. They can look at all of them. We tell them everything they want to know about them. And then coming up this Friday, we'll have a showing, which is pretty much the same thing. It's just, there's going to be a lot more people there, obviously, but it's still a great place. All the Colts will be tied up. You can look at them, you can watch them beard and ridden, and then you can talk to us after the sale, do whatever you want. Um, And we just visit. And so it's really kind of a nice casual sale. It's not, you know, the horse is in the stall and it gets run through the ring and that's it. And you kind of miss information. I think we try to push as much information out there as possible about each and every one of these cults. So, yeah, I, I really do. I, I love the platform that we have and how, how it works. So Yeah, it's those the auction mobility sites are radically handy, especially for the yes. horse side of things. Um, now I was bebopping around and horse shopping on your site because it's my most favorite thing to do. Um, <laughs> but tell me about the the across that I found interesting is the heirloom mare that is you bred her, you mm-hmm. bred that is a maternal sister to Caden Richard's summer colada, and mm-hmm. uh, the mare is a dash to fame mare. But you bred that mare to Time for the Diamond, which was Nick Dower's. Um, snaffle bit futurity champion is that correct that is correct tell me yeah. about that that you know you went with an outcross from your program program tell yeah me. you know we really are liking the outcrosses and we've we've uh done quite a bit of outcrosses over the years and you know just from a just from a uh cowboying and ranching standpoint they're just really kind of fun horses but this particular one um you know we really like time for the diamond Nick Dowers, you know, of course, did a phenomenal job with that horse, and he's just kind of a cool horse. I really like the one-time Peptos, and um, so we brought her to SLR Nick of Time, or the, him to SLR Nick of Time, and and that mare um, produced uh, Margarita Red Rita, who won, you know, a phenomenal amount of money in the in the barrel fraternities. Uh, we fraternities a mare in the barrels by. Blazing Jetalina, Margarita Red Rita that won about forty thousand last year. You know, it's just a really proven line, and that that SLR Nick of Time, that's the sire of Heirloom in the sale, is just a phenomenally well put together mare. And so, you know, we thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to, you know, this mare looks like a really kind of a rope horse type horse anyway. Let's see what we can do, and and that that mare I think is going to be a cool prospect for somebody. Um, we did ranch on her quite a bit. It's mm-hmm. the only one in the sale as a two-year-old. She was just kind of a stronger type mare, and we thought, you know, I think she could handle, and it would be good for her to get her in a place that where she sh- should be for the in the sale. So Troy Brandemil, he did ride her um, on our fall run, and uh, she certainly had a lot of a lot of hard miles in the mountains, and 
and really is a, just in a really nice spot, I think, for for City to be able to go on with her now. So, can you pick anything uh, that's a favorite? <laughs> Any anything else that you really like? And so, I like the. I mean, I could go through and pick. I would say something I like about all of them. But do you have any anyone that's like just super special that you're excited to see who it goes to? You know, I think you know when I when I look at what I think is probably some of our nicest real horse prospects. Um, Midnight Heist, um, lot number one is just a really cool horse. He's just absolutely gorgeous, short back, going to have some run, but really is able to stop and a cool mover. I I really like that horse a lot. Um, we have, uh, cash flow queen, I think is another really nice real horse prospect. She's out of a Corona cartel daughter. Really well made. Again, kind of has that classic casino high, short back, and whatnot. And I think she'll be a, a great cross. Um, the below the surface is our our only other um, cow horse cross out of Roller and Shaker, and out of a highbrow hickory mare that's produced a lot. That that mare um, has the horse that Jay Stout's rodeo on Holland out of our casino high mares out of the same. Or Sterling is out of the same mare, so that's a that's a great cross. Um, lot eight by and by that that mare, we we almost kept her and sent her to Richards. I think she's a great. I was going to say that looks like cross. a head horse. Yeah. Yes, she 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 is. She she's probably one of the most natural ones in the sale. That just almost, you just literally put your hand on her neck and she just hooks up with cattle. Um, you know, just a really cool mare. I think she's 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 a really great cross yeah i wouldn't and, be surprised uh, if ren and chad and caden are hitting the refresh button on those bids on that one because yeah. she looks like a head horse yeah she is she that that's a good mare she really is i think she would and she i i truly think she would do it and probably the the uh well there's a couple others but the war bridle that's probably one of my favorite Colts that one's so yeah. fancy if you if anybody is listening and looking the the war bridle horse has all the chrome and looks like he can run and yeah yes and he's just that that colt uh, and i've ridden several of the full siblings christy Steffes uh is rodeo on uh, a mare called Clare creek canyon that's a full sister that's really nice i have a full sister that got her um she was in barrel training but got hurt and so i have her at home and i'm been riding her here at the ranch and and whatnot and this cult is just kind of the same thing just really easy going plenty like tons of tons of horse but doesn't ever have to show it to you he's never in your hand or anything like that he's just that that's that horse right there is just like the horse that you want to ride every day and uh then probably the other one you know outside of heirloom that we talked about that I think is a really phenomenal real horse prospect is closer to find. Yeah, I knew you were um, going to say that because that Bucks Hancock dude is so cool. That's the uh, maternal sire. Yes. Yeah. And I think that he's going to, of course, he's been really promoted in the barrels, but I think that horse, I think really could do tons of good in the real horse world as well. Um, and this, this closer to find cult um, is just extremely agreeable with everything you do there's plenty of horse there but just you know very agreeable has you know a beautiful stop really rides around nice and i think honestly whether it's you know a higher level rider or your granddad or your kids anybody honestly could get along with that colt he's just really kind of a cool horse and so. if you look at his papers like it's frenchman's guy holland uh bucks hancock dude obviously and then corona cartel on the bottom side so it's just a what a interesting mishmash of of superstars yeah. it's a very interesting uh set of papers and he's buckskin and fancy so I yeah, know. he is. He's and he's got you know. It's kind of harder to tell in the pictures, but I mean, he's got mane and tail for days. You know, he'll, he'll be he'll be pretty. There's no doubt about it. So, y'all work hard at your photography. It looks like somebody comes out and does a really good job making sure that it's a very professional delivery of everything. Who does all that stuff? Uh, Lisa Fordyce does. She, she does all the and photography too. She does. Yep. She uh, she does a fabulous job. And, and it's not without a lot of patience. That take, uh, those photos all take a lot of time. But, yeah. <laughs> um, 
it uh it's well worth it because you know honestly i mean you can tell people till you're blue in the face how nice a horse is but if you got a bad photo yeah nobody nobody's gonna pay for anything they don't you know they want to see that horse looking nice i you know i don't want to buy an ugly horse and not very many other people do not unless they're cheap you know yeah so. I think um, that's something that we, we've done a few articles on how the, the rope horse industry has had to play catch up on the marketing side of things because, uh, you know, I think that's why Lisa and I always got along because she's so good at all that stuff and she gets it and it's so important and so few programs still are uh, utilizing skill sets like hers. So you're lucky oh, to have well, her. <laughs> I'm, I'm very lucky to have her. There's no doubt about it. She And yeah. Lisa's just so passionate. She really is. And, and, uh, yeah. You know, and she does a great job. We're extremely blessed to have a great team. We have, um, you know, uh, my, uh, obviously Lisa, Troy Brandon, you know, Lucas Talbot, who's been riding some of these horses just started riding with us this year. He's a cow horse trainer background and has done a phenomenal job. Um, and my sister-in-law does a phenomenal job on the breeding and the veterinary side of things. So it's not just one person. It's just, a, I don't know. I don't know how I get, got so lucky, but I did <laughs> and I, I feel blessed. So, and y'all have, um, and, and speaking of pictures, every horse up there has x-rays that people can check out. When did, when were all those x-rays done and what do people need to know about the horse's x-rays if they're, if they're looking to buy online? Yeah, so, you know, we wanted to try to be as transparent as possible, try to have all the information in place. Um, you know, if you, you know, look at the x-rays, if you have a vet that you want to have look at them, have them look at them. Um, but we want all the information to be there that, so that people can 100% buy with confidence. And, you know, the other thing is, is we're not going to, you know, if a horse wasn't clean in his x-rays or whatever, we're not going to put him in the sale, obviously. I'm not, you know, just putting an x-ray up uh, the, uh, of a horse that we feel is unsound. But I want people to be very confident and be able to look at these and make their own decisions as well. Um, and I, I want them to be confident in the fact that these horses have all been ridden and they've all been vetted. I mean, the last two years I've uh, last year, I pulled a horse from the sale that I didn't feel, feel was going to fit anybody, and I pulled another horse from the sale this year. And uh, you know, um, whether it's soundness or even if even if they if they if they want to be spooky or buck or anything, I pull them out of the sale. I don't I don't want people to buy those. I'll sell them privately, or I'll figure out how to get rid of them. But I'm not going to sell them to my clients because, you know, I may end up selling these horses could go to anybody they could go to your granddad or they could go to the the handiest punchiest cowboy around i don't know who they're going to go to and so yeah the handiest punchiest cowboy around buys them he'll get along with anything but yeah you know my 75 year old grandpa buys him and doesn't think he's going to go ranch on him tomorrow i'm not going to be able to feel very confident in that if i don't you know if the horse isn't everything i said he was and so I mean, we do. We pull horses out of the sale, and we just we have exactly what we feel like people are going to get along with, and because it is online, and people need to be confident in that. So, no, I love it. And so the dates are it's February second to the fourth, and so it closes. Or is, tell, give me the dates and the whole rundown on the sale for anybody that's that's curious. So it'll open on February second, mm -hmm. uh, the morning of February second. The showing will be the evening of February 2nd at five o'clock and then it'll run all the way through Sunday. Okay. And so people, if they say you're in Florida or Texas, do you have recommended shippers or is that just on the buyer to figure out the shipping? So I have recommended shippers that will work with people on. Um, but if they have their own, they're obviously more than welcome to use them. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of the horses. And you know, one thing, that I think it is different as far as what we do as well as we do recommend that people, if they're close enough or wherever they're from, they can fly up here if they want, if they're from a long ways away. But after you buy these horses, if you want, come up and ride them for a day with our trainers before you take them home. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, because again, we want people to get along with these horses and, you know, we obviously, uh, 
we would be more than happy for you guys to come up and write them and ask questions or whatever. And, you know, that's something that most people, when they buy a horse from a sale, never have that opportunity. But we would we would love to be able to do that with everybody that buys these horses. So I love it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you making time for me this morning, Garrett. Well, thank you. I appreciate you making time as well. And, and uh, we'll look forward to what the sale brings yeah absolutely i'm excited (laughs) all right good luck thank you thank you bye hey everyone thank you so much for listening i am glad you stuck with us through this episode of the score this is our horse market report series If there's anybody you'd like to hear from when it comes to the horse market, please leave us a comment or or write a review and let us know who you want to hear more of, what you want to hear about. If you leave a comment on social media, I promise you I will pay attention because we look at all of that stuff. We don't just ignore it. So again, this sale for 88 Ranch is February 2nd to February 4th. The sale goes live February 2nd at 8 a.m., and closes February 4th at 3 p.m. Those are Mountain Standard Time. And you can watch the preview, the virtual preview, online on their Facebook page at 88 Remuda Sale. Um, You can see them ride the horses. You can see them walk around each horse, talk about the horse, and they are available to answer any questions. So if you want to learn any more, check it out, 88performancehorses.com. The sale itself is on remudasale.88performancehorses.com.